Coming up on Doctype, we're going to show you how to read the color values of specific pixels on your canvas. Then, Nick's going to deconstruct the solar system in this week's Doctype Deconstruct. So roses are red and violets are blue, this next line won't rhyme, you're watching Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte. Or a developer who can't tell his margin from his padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. Heck yeah. So next week, we'll be in the Big Apple for the Future of Web Design New York. That's right. We'll be running around a little bit crazy getting interviews with the speakers for the Think Vitamin blog. But if you happen to see us, stop and say hi. We'll also be at the after party, so that's a great time to catch up with us. Definitely. So on Facebook, we have a Facebook fan page. I don't know if you know this, but at <laughs> facebook.com slash doctype, we have our fan page. And every Thursday, I'm going to start posting a discussion question. So on Thursdays, we'll have a doctype discussion. So if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to check us out there. So this week, I'm going to be showing you how to read the colors of specific pixels on your canvas. And I am going to deconstruct the CSS3 solar system. Let's check it out. One of the coolest features of the canvas is the ability to read out the pixel values of the pixels on that canvas. So in this example, we're going to be creating a little tool that works something like this. We're going to use the mouse to pick certain pixels and be able to read the color value of that pixel on the canvas and display it for instance in this box. Now there's a lot of other cool stuff you could do with that information, but as a simple example, we're just going to try to wire this together. Now the basic code is pretty simple. Uh, we're just getting the canvas and the canvas context. And then we're going to draw our image onto that canvas. Now we saw how to do that in a previous episode, but the draw image function looks like this. We create an image element, and on load, we use the draw image function to draw that image onto the canvas. Then we set the URL so the image will load and be drawn onto the canvas. Then after we get the image onto the canvas, we're going to use jQuery to set up the mouse move listener. Now what this will do is we'll call the get pixel color function that we're about to define to actually get the color of that pixel under the mouse. Now to do that, we're going to pass in the context of our canvas, as well as the x and y value, which we're going to get from the events layer x and layer y properties. So this will be something like 5 and 10, wherever our mouse is on the canvas. So that get pixel color function looks like this. Now the thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the image data from the context. Now get image data allows us to get that, and it takes four arguments, an x, a y, and a width and a height. Now since we only need to get one pixel off of this canvas, we're going to get a very small image data with a width and height of 1 and the x and y being the x and y where our mouse is. Now the image data looks a little something like this. It has a height and a width value and then a data value. And the data value is a canvas pixel array. Now this is just a normal array of numbers 0 through 255. And each pixel on the canvas in our data array will be assigned to four values in that array. So for instance, pixel 0 is index 0, 1, 2, and 3 of our canvas pixel array. Now of those four, they're split up into the red value, the green value, the blue value, and the alpha value. So then pixel 1, the second pixel, will start at index 4, and that pattern repeats all the way to the end. Now since each pixel is represented by four index values, the total length of our canvas pixel array is our width in pixels times height times 4. So we're using the image data dot data property to get that canvas pixel array, and we're storing it in the bytes variable. Then it's very easy to get the red, green, and blue values by simply getting bytes sub zero, bytes sub one for green, bytes sub two for blue, and bytes sub three for the alpha channel, the opacity of that pixel. Now in our case, it's always going to be 255 because we don't have any transparency in our image, but it would work if we did use a transparent PNG. Finally, we just need to construct a CSS color value, in this case using the RGBA model, and place our red, green, blue, and alpha values into that string. 
And this will result in a string like this with RGBA and four number values. Then with that CSS color, we could do something like grab our color div and set the CSS background property to that color. So then as we mouse around our image, we're calculating the pixel value and we're just placing it into that div. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you gonna go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctype.tv from? So we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you gonna use? Enter the code Doctype3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com like so many geeks out there i love space so when i saw the css3 solar system i thought it was pretty much the coolest thing i'd ever seen now for those of you that haven't seen this it's basically a not to scale model of the solar system done in css3 now, I know what you're thinking, how exactly did Alex, the founder of CSSBeauty.com, make such a beauty? Well, I'm so glad you asked because it's the subject of this week's Doctype Deconstruct. So let's start off by taking a look at the markup. Each planet and its orbit looks something like this. The list item represents the planet's orbit, which we'll see in just a second, and the span represents the actual planet. Here I've highlighted the list item using the Chrome Developer Tools. When it's outlined like this, you can see that there's a couple of things going on here. To get the round shape of the orbit, they're using the CSS3 border radius property. If you push the border radius to certain extremes, you can actually make the corners of a box so round that the element ends up looking like a circle. You also may have noticed that the box is tilted. That's because it's the LI that's actually rotating here. To make the box rotate, CSS3 transforms are being used in combination with CSS3 animations. Here are the animation keyframes for WebKit-based browsers. The transforms here are what make the orbits rotate. To learn more about transforms, check out episode 34 of Doctype. The keyframes here, named orbit, describe how the element should rotate from one point to the next, in this case making a complete 360 degree rotation. The orbit keyframes are then assigned to the list item, and the list item is also instructed to animate infinitely, so that the list item and its child span tag, which represents the planet, just spins around and around again. So now let's talk about the planets and the sun. Just like the orbits, they're using CSS3 border radii, and they're applied to such an extreme that the square divs actually become round. Other planets like Saturn have rings, and the Earth has an orbiting moon, which is also pretty interesting. However, we're going to do what you should never do, and we're gonna look directly into the sun. If you look closely, you can see two things here. First, there's a subtle change in color and shade across the surface of the sun to make it appear more round, and then there's an even more subtle glow around the outside. To give the sun the subtle change in color and give it some roundness, CSS3 gradients are being used. To learn all about gradients, check out episodes 10 and 11 of Doctype. Then to make the sun glow, a box shadow is being used. Remember, box shadows don't have to be used just to make shadows. You can set them to a brighter color to make page elements look like they're glowing. The X and Y offsets are set to zero pixels so that the shadow is centered, and then the blur radius is set to 50 pixels to make the lighting appear very soft. So more than just showing you how the CSS3 solar system is actually put together, I hope that this Doctype Deconstruct actually gave you a little bit of an idea of how CSS3 features can be combined together in very creative ways. That is it for this week. Until next time, be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype TV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS or YouTube, 
you'll never miss an episode of Doc Type, so why not? So until next Tuesday, remember that every great web page starts with Doc Type. <laughs>